All right, we're ready to uh, start getting our pacemaker level there. I did want to point out this is something that I had done uh, off camera a couple weeks ago. I went ahead and cleaned the ways, cleaned them down real well. I just got them sprayed down with some S SP350, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe them off and then uh, put some whey oil on there because what I want to do is, you know, move the carriage from one end to the other so to make sure that we don't have any twist in the bed there. And we may just use this sur surface right here to initially get our um, longitudinal leveling this way right here. But I thought about actually just taking this off, taking the compound off. I need to take it to the other shop anyway because I need to machine the T-nut for this for our new tool post. I haven't shown that yet, but that's something I need to get to soon and show you the new tool post that we have and get that mounted on there. We'll go ahead and take that off and take it to the house and be working on that and then be able to use this surface right here uh, to do our leveling as well, get it cleaned real well. So may just go end up taking that off here real soon and we can just use that surface for leveling. So we're ready to get started on it and we got, here's our levels here. We got our Lufkin, our Starrett, and then we have our Starrett 199 um, Master Precision level there we'll use to do the finishing, but we'll get them roughed in with these guys right here. All right, we're getting the uh, compound picked up off here. We're using our jib crane. Just trying to get it square. There should be a little pilot there that it spins on. Yep, there it is right there. So there's a look at our cross slide surface right there. I'll just continue to get the oil off there. We'll clean it and then we'll uh, scotch bright it and uh, stone it real good. So the uh, T-bolts actually come out. You have to have take the cross slide completely off there. And then this slot right here, it'll drop down and go basically go out the backside. But we're not going to take this off right now. We'll just move them as we need, but this should be a, a pretty good reference surface that we can use to help with our leveling right here. We'll use some of this degreaser here to get it cleaned off. Gonna go ahead and give this a scotch bright. We're using the uh, 336. Give it a little lubricant. And just some uh, scotch bright. We'll just try to get the surface clean, get any of the rust off of it, and then we'll clean it again and uh, use our precision stones to make sure there's no dings or high spots on it. It's looking good. I think I'll get the uh, gray scotch bright and go ahead and polish it a little bit more with the gray before we move on to our stones. All right, so here's a pair of our precision ground stones right here. All you do is just lap them together a little bit to kind of clean the face. And I'll start I'll start with the uh, coarse side here. And really what I'm doing is I'm kind of rubbing the face of it or the surface here and I'm seeing if I can hear and feel any really high spots. When you do, you're really going to be able to, to tell by using the stone here. It looks like we've actually got a nice flat surface with very minimal I can tell right along these edges right here, I can see some shiny spots coming through. So I'm gonna hit those a little bit harder. You know, just things kind of hitting that corner right there. It raises up that edge. So 
Same thing on this side right here. I can see a little bit of shiny right along the edge there. It looks pretty good. I'm seeing nice shiny all the way through there. So we still have a nice flat surface. Usually every time we uh, share these precision stones on the channel or any, any channel for that matter, Instagram, you usually have folks that comment and ask what's the purpose of them. And the answer is always the same. They work great for precision surfaces like this right here. This is just one example. But if you take a, if you take a stone like this, you know, a regular factory stone from Norton and you go to rub something with it, you're gonna find out that it's not flat. That's uh, usually you're gonna be hitting in the corners. That it's usually kind of like a concave surface. So depending on what you're using it for, I mean, that's okay for some things, but if you're gonna be using it on a precision ground surface or a scrape surface or anything like this, I think that the precision ground on a surface grinder stones are gonna be your much better choice. And you're not gonna be putting extra scratches in the surface because the stone is so flat that you're not gouging the corners into it. Basically, you just want to take off any high spots. So like all right through here, you see these little marks where something's been set there or things hit it and it deforms the metal and actually raises it up a little bit. And this ensures that you're polishing that down. So I think this is going to work real well. I believe we're just going to end up using this surface here for our leveling needs. I think that's going to be great. All right, went ahead, did the same on the bottom of the uh, level, just um, rubbed it lightly with the precision stone. And we'll set this right in the middle. We've got this kind of moved to the uh, center of the bedways there. All right, and it looks like we're quite high on the back side of the machine. Yeah, we're pretty high. So what we'll, what we'll do is probably lower the back side down some and then maybe raise the front side quite a bit, yeah. That's me raising it with my fingers here. So we got quite a ways to go, quite a ways to go. So we'll go ahead and start getting this rough leveled in now. All right, I moved you to the other side, by the way. So backside of the machine's over here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to drop it down a little bit. See if we can do kind of equal movements here. Quarter turn. Let's see what a quarter turn does. Not do anything there. Still got a ways to go, don't we? Man, that weight, that is heavy on that tailstock side. Not tailstock side, headstock side. All right, I'm gonna keep adjusting. Making any headway here? Yep, getting a little closer. I'm still working that back side. I'm just trying to lower it down as far as we can go because it was so high back here. I'm gonna, uh, you can see it while we, uh, I probably won't be able to go, but a few more times on this, we're gonna be sitting down on the pad. Uh, yep, there it is right there. All right, go ahead and snug it back up. We'll have to go to the front side of the uh, lathe. Oh, that got us a lot closer right there though, didn't it? So now we've got, I'm gonna do the same thing on this uh, backside here on the tailstock. Oh yeah, we're definitely twisting around good now. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and flip the, uh, let's flip the indicator. That's getting us roughed in like we need to be. 
What I want to do is see uh, how it is from end to end. All right, so we're, we're high on the uh, tailstock side. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna keep working this and uh, trying to get it roughed in a lot closer. Once we get it pretty close this way here, then we'll start moving our carriage, or uh, yeah, our carriage down to each side and trying to get the twist out of it. Let's see where we're at. So a line off still. That's got us a lot closer. I'm gonna end up having to do probably more adjustments on the headstock in that way because the back one is uh, right down on the, the face of the uh, leveling pad there, just like on the back side of the, the other end. I tweaked it just a little bit more. We're, we're gonna have to continue moving it, but we've got the uh, front to back pretty well level with this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and reposition it this way and look at it again, see if I threw it off. But I had it really, really close using this level here. Yeah, that's close. Real close. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and crank our carriage down towards the, uh, the chuck in the headstock in. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, actually, what I would like to do, let's go ahead and turn it back this way. And I will move you and position it so, you, so that as, as I move the carriage, if, it's, uh, if we're getting any twist in it, maybe you'll be able to see it move whenever we do that. All right, there you go. So let's crank it on down, see what happens. You also have to consider there's uh, wear in the, ways as well. So we're going to be factoring that into our level. Let's see what happens. Kind of get it close to the chuck as we can. Yep. And you can see that there's uh, quite a bit of twist in it. That's that right there. A lot of that is going to be the twist in the bed. So we're going to be coming to this side right over here and raising it up until we get it close. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let me get the wrench. And I'll start raising that side up a little at the time. Go another click or two. Might have went too far right there. Let me drop it just a smidge. Let's see if that settles out. I think I went too far again, didn't I? It doesn't take much. So this is the end that we're working at right there. You can see the wrench. These are the two bolts. So we have the twist on this end pretty well out of that. So what we'll do is we'll crank the carriage down to the tailstock end. And then these are the two bolts that we're leveling right here. All right, so we'll bring it down here. And we'll see what kind of twist is in our bedways right there. Because this is, this is the most important step right here is getting the twist out of the bedways. So we'll continue to work each in there, trying to get it as straight as we can. Once we get it real close with this level, we're going to switch over to our stair at 199. And uh, it'll really tell the tale at that point. See the twist? That moved quite a bit. I'm going to move this. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, center out of here just so that it's out of our view. I think we can go just a little further. That's about it right there. So you can see now we're really high on this side. So we need to drop this side of the uh, tailstock in down and try to get that twist. That's quite a bit in there. I'm going to go ahead and start lowering this side. About a line off. Doesn't take much. There we go. That's pretty, pretty dang close, isn't it? So I'm going to continue working this a couple more times. Leveling it here. We're going to crank the carriage all the way down to the chuck. We're going to level it here. Try to get as close as I can. 
and then we'll switch over to the 199 and then finish it out. Once we get this, then I want to bring it to the middle here. We still got to tighten down those right there. So as we adjust the center and then the outward bolts there, we'll have to continue monitoring our level to make sure that we don't skew it out. So I've worked each end twice now. Feel like we got it pretty close. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our stair at 199 and put it on there and uh, see, see how close we really got it. All right, giving the 199 a little lick with the uh, precision stone. I'm gonna reach over you here and we're gonna set it, we're gonna set it right next to the, uh, the other level here. This is the number 58, by the way. Lufkin, number 58. All right, let's uh, tell you what I'll do. I'm just gonna go ahead and square them up like that. We can kind of compare them as we move and let that settle in and see where we're at. So yeah, we're, we're actually high on this side here. I don't know, can you guys see that? Let me reposition this. Not sure if you could see the bubble or not. So a little bit high, not quite a full line, maybe about a half a line uh, high on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and it's not gonna take much. I just wanna drop it a tiny bit. Hold on a second, I lost my mic. That magnet, man, it sticks to. Anything you get close to, that magnet will grab onto it. All right, now I think we're ready. All right, just barely move the wrench. Yeah, see, I went too far. Just that little bit does not take much. So we're about a half a line off, I believe. Let me go back up the other way. See if that did it there. When you get that close, it's kind of hard to even tell if you're moving it or not. Definitely moved it. This is always such a sensitive operation to do when you're using this uh, 199. But that is, I mean, that is looking pretty dang good. It's a little bit, a little bit high on this side. You got to give it a little time to settle as well, but I think it needs to go back down. Let's see if I. I can't tell if I actually moved the screw or if I was just getting a little flex in there, but yeah, I moved it. All right, I'm gonna keep working this right here off camera to try to get as close as I can because this is what happens. You start chasing your tail on a half a line and it, and it just ends up taking a lot of time. So let me get it closer. We'll bring you back. We're gonna move to the tail stock end then. All right, we keep playing with it. We've got it tweaked to uh, about as close as I can get it. Let's move to the tailstock end of the machine and check that side with our 199. Now that we're away from the uh, chuck, we'll go ahead and reposition you here in the center. off a little bit high over here on this side and grab the wrench and go ahead and drop it there's a little bit of a movement there a little bit more Probably went too far that time. But that's a, it's always fun showing you this because you can see just what we mean by getting the twist out of the bed. When you stand away from a machine like this, it's such big, heavy casted machine, you don't think that it's gonna bow and twist, but it certainly will. But you're talking about such minute movements. 
Not enough that you can see with your eye unless you're looking at that level there. It needs to come back up just a, about a half a line. All right, we're getting real close. So I'm gonna keep working on this end, try to get it really close and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep working each end of the lathe, trying to get it uh, perfectly level as I can get it. All right, so I had this in as close as I could get it. So I wanted to go ahead and start getting the outer level and bolts touching down on the pads and just running those down to where they just touch skews a level out. So what I'm doing now is just using these two. So come around here and show you this one as well on this back corner. And I'm basically just putting pressure down on them because every time you put a little bit of pressure down, not even a lot, just kind of come down to where it's almost a little more than finger tight. It throws the level out. So I'm using these two right here and I'm adjusting them down so that we actually have a little pressure on the, on the base here. And I'm watching the level. We've got it very, very close right there, but I'm continuing to just tweak those outer two so that we have a good amount of pressure on all four on this end of the headstock. We just finished the headstock in. We're moving back down to the tailstock. And I thought I'd show you. So right here in the middle where we've, we've got to uh, set all four of those. And I wanted to see the difference there. And you can see that there's a little bit of twist right here in the center. We're gonna come back to this and once we get both ends, it's just a little bit high on this side right there. So once we get both ends of the lathe here where we want, I will move to the center and we'll tweak these very lightly to uh, get this part of it leveled out as well. I've been working the tailstock side here. I about got it where I want it. So the two outer leveling bolts there, I've been, you know, run those down by hand until we get centered up on the pad there and then just barely start putting a little bit of torque on those, just barely, just a little bit. And you'll see, you'll start throwing the level out and then you just continue to adjust those two just ever so slightly because you just want a little bit of torque there on those screws to kind of equalize the pressure on this whole foot here and just keep working those two. And I've been doing that probably about 10, 15 minutes now working on this end. And we've got the level about where it needs to be. I mean, it's, it's about as level. It's hard for me to get over this. And you wanna be careful about, if you stand on it to get in there and look, you're gonna throw the level out. If you lean on it, you could throw the level out. So I just try to be careful that I don't come over here and put all my body weight on this. I'm just leaning over, trying to look at the level you got to let it settle and then make some adjustments there. So this end's looking good. I want to go back to the headstock in and make sure that we don't throw it, that we didn't throw it out any. If we do, we'll adjust it. And then at that point, I'll check the tailstock one more time. Then we're going to go to the center and I'm going to start getting these guys to where the center of the bed has, you know, any of the flex in that or the twist, I mean, we're going to get this out right here. All right. So it's just a tedious process that takes a while. If there was a second person here helping me uh, film, you could probably see a little bit more of this, but since I'm by myself and this is a repetitive process, I'm just kind of giving you the key highlights of what we're doing to level out the machine. Just brought it to the headstock side and after an inspection, we are approximately a half a line off. So still very close, but we need to make one adjustment on this. So. We will uh, work these screws right here, just barely moving those in the upward position and try to level that out. It is extremely close. We are almost home. All right, so we've got both ends level. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the center foot right here. I'm just gonna, going to, I'm gonna adjust these with just a uh, slight amount of pressure on them. Just like that right there. Let's repeat that with this guy. This is the one that's got a little bit of tension on it here. All right, there we go. Just where it touches. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing back there. Go ahead and get those uh, set and then we'll go up top and uh, see what the level says. All right, guys, we're ready to uh, move down to the center foot now. We've got all four of the pads uh, finger tight onto the floor. 
I'm gonna line that level up right down the center line of that foot. And let's look and see what kind of twist we might have in it. So right about in there. All right, we got you over the center foot. And so it looks like we're maybe a line off uh, high, high on this side, the back of the machine. So I'm gonna come around to the, uh, the front here and go ahead and make a couple adjustments. So I'll go ahead and start doing that. All right, just kind of tightening it up there. I mean, not really raising it, but feeling when you actually kind of have more pressure down onto that pad. All right, did we move it? Oh yeah, moved a little bit. So we need to go just a little bit more. Let me try that again. It's moving. Really, really close now. We're less than a half a line off. So let me try one more little tweak here. I'm doing both of them, by the way. Just barely. And that should be, that should be it. Yep. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go around to the back side and I'm gonna go ahead and tweak those just to make sure that we do have a little bit of torque down onto the pad and it may move that bubble. Let me go ahead and do that while I got you on and see what happens. I just wanna make sure that it's touching good. That one feels good. That one feels good too. So we're definitely flat on our pad. And it looks like we're just about home free right there. All right, guys, our American pacemaker is officially leveled out. I feel very comfortable with where I have this. I've been tweaking the center of it. We've got the center of it nice and level, and we have verified by moving to the headstock and the tailstock in after that, and we have maintained our level to remove the twist out of the bedways, which is what we were doing there. So I feel good about it, and I think it's ready to go. We got all the pads. Everything's touching with the right amount of torque there on the pads. So I believe we're ready to go. This thing is level. It is level on the center. So that is done. We can start moving on to some other projects on this lathe. All right, guys, I feel good about the work that we got accomplished on the American Pacemaker today. I feel really good about the level that we have it at. And after we do a little bit more work on it, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna check it again and make sure it hasn't moved. And if it has, we'll tweak it if we need to. But I have checked both ends and the center and we are about as level as I can see it with that precision level, which is super close. So uh, that's, that's great. The, all the leveling pads, screws, all that work turned out just fine and uh, it's all ready to go. We got the compound right there that we're gonna load up. We're gonna take it to the other shop because I wanna start working on that real soon. I've got a really nice tool post that I'm excited to share with you that we're gonna be mounting on that. So I've got a machine, a T-nut, and I wanna get all this cleaned up. We may end up even taking that apart as well. So I just wanna take it to the other shop so that we can uh, work on it there, get the tool post mounted. I do have some other things in store that I wanna get started on pretty soon too. Like, you know, I wanna finish getting all this cleaned up right here, get the top of the carriage uh, all cleaned up like we did there so that it looks good, looks presentable. We don't have all the surface rust sitting on it, making it look ugly. So basically some cleaning that we need to do. I wanna get it, um, I wanna do an oil change for the headstock. We'll do an oil change in the apron there as well. You know, do some oil draining, that kind of stuff. So some of the, some more of the maintenance type things that needs to get done is still on the list. We just had other projects that we've been doing, other machines been coming in here, machine shop jobs that I've been working on, trying to get those done, get them out the door. So finally getting back on the pacemaker and I feel good about that. So it feels like there was something else that I was gonna, oh yeah, the chuck. So this is another project I wanna do as well. We're gonna use our evapor rust and get our four jaw Cushman chuck all cleaned up, making it look like a million bucks again. and get it mounted on the pacemaker. That's, that's what I wanna do. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully that's gonna help out somebody there with leveling their machine. And um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of comments of guys, you know, with 
similar machine, so they're excited to see what we do to it so that they can implement those types of maintenance procedures into their machines as well. And just remember that what I show you on this will apply to pretty much any lathe out there, you know. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed and we'll see you again real soon, all right?